All right, so good morning or good afternoon whenever you happen to read this. I just uh, we're using this to go back over section one lecture notes. Uh, I'm going to go through this particular video kind of quickly because we've already kind of covered the material in lecture. Uh, but general idea, uh, John Bardang and Walter Bertain at Bell Labs invented the uh, transistor in 1947, the first contact point transistor. And before that, they were using cathode tubes. Uh, they were power hungry and unreliable. Um, and I kind of went into that was nearly classified as a military secret. Um, and we had this issue with the what is known as the tyranny of numbers, where they thought everything had to be connected to every other component. And where Jack Kilby is also the inventor of the JK flip-flop. And he won the Nobel Prize for doing a single piece of semiconductor material. And all these transistors are connected to each other. So we, we uh, later on we went over an inverter. So this is a PMOS inverter. And this is, I'm sorry, that's a PMOS transistor and an NMOS transistor connected. And you have your input. And then you have multiple transistors connecting to an output. And so this is the first integrated circuit that was put out by Texas Instruments. TGO 1.1 is your four types of integration. You have small scale integration, medium scale integration, large scale integration, and very large scale integration. So it becomes 10, 10 to 100, 100 to 1,000, 1,000 to 10,000. So it's an inverter, and the general idea is you want if you put in a input, so you put in a zero, well what's going to happen is you have your P bulk here. If you have a zero, you're actually going to push your N bulk down and you're going to create the channel for your VDD, your holes to go through. And likewise, with you have put in a one, it's going to turn on your NMOS transistor by pushing your E minus your electrons down, creating a channel for the zeros to go through. I'm sorry, oh, your holes. No, I've screwed that up. So medium scale integration is you're now coming up to an arithmetic logic unit. We put taking all these SSIs and combining them. Large scale integration, this is your pipeline MIPS data path to build a computer architecture. And then VLSI, you have an example here. This is the Intel 44, 4004 processor. And this is a general description of Moore's law. You can see this is the number of transistors. We have a log plot here over time. And you can see that it's essentially doubling every 18 months. Well, what happens, you have these spaces where the transistor sizes are getting smaller and smaller and you're getting more and more transistors well now you're worry have to worry about heat power consumption and signal integrity and we're going to talk about a lot of that in this course so 1.2 we talk about silicon in covalent bonds silicon by itself is a group four element which means it has four valence electrons and then what happens is it meets a buddy and it says hey All right so then you form your covalent bond and then it does so with four other silicon atoms so they're very strong these form these covalent bonds so silicon by itself is not good for use in computers because we want these electrons and holes to be able to flow so what we're going to do is we're going to have these concept of dopants. So 1.3 is going to be the definition of a dopant, and 1.4 is carrier. So dopant is impurities placed in the silicon to improve the conductivity, um, and 1.4, sorry, it's this. Carriers are free charges moving about the silicon. Electrons are negative. Holes are positive. And 
n-type semiconductor. So basically what you have here is you have an arsenic, which is a group 5. So arsenic has 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, right? So then you get silicon comes by. Silicon's like, I'm going to form a covalent bond here. Silicon's like, I'm going to form a covalent bond here. Arsenic's like, I'm going to form a covalent bond here. And then you're going to see what's had to happen is you have arsenic plus positively charged ion. Right? And so what's going to happen is you're going to fill these holes, and here's where the hole is. And so you, the electron says, hey, I want to come here, and then you're going to keep flowing. Well, that electron had to come from somewhere, so that's another hole. So that's going to be your elect current flow. So we formally define it at 1.5 here. This is the TGO. And... 1.5 and 1.6, you should definitely be aware of these. Um, arsenic, where the fifth valence electron is loosely bound. Thermal vibrations, and that's what your actual voltage is. So you have this voltage going from circuits, and you're going to have some sort of, you know, if you have a transistor going on here, you're actually going to treat, you know, anything from positive. We define circuit flow in that way. But what's actually happening is electrons are flowing this way, and your holes are flowing this way. So when we have this thermal vibration created by a potential voltage on the lattice, sets this electron free, leaving a positively charged arsenic ion and a free electron. So the electrons are traveling this way, and your holes are going that way. One point six is a p-type where you have group three elements. So boron's going to come in here, right? You got boron that has one, two, three. And then what's going to happen is it can borrow an electron from a neighboring atom. So you're going to have silicon, right? Silicon, silicon, right? So now you have six elements. Now silicon's got one here, and you have seven, and this valence shell can hold eight. So it can borrow another one, right? So it has one there. It can, the hole, which is here, acts as the positive carrier. So P-type semiconductors are silicon-based semiconductors with group three elements, such as boron, which can borrow an electron from a neighboring atom. That silicon atom can borrow another electron from another atom, and the hole acts as the positive carrier. And so what happens when we put them together? Well, we have a diode. So 1.7, diode is the junction of a p-type and n-type silicon, an anode is the p-type portion of the diode, and a cathode is the n-type portion. And so we spent a good amount of time describing what's going on here in class. So you have you know, electrons flowing this way through your p-type and your holes are flowing this way towards the positive and negative. And so this is your logical equivalent in your diode and in your reverse bias diode when you put it the other way, well they, that's the uh, electrons or holes are where they want to be, That therm those thermal vibrations are ineffective and as a result you're not actually creating anything. And so in this course, you're actually going to combine them using wells and polys and silicons to actually form metal oxide semiconductor field effect transistors. And for the rest of the course, you'll hear me refer to them as MOSFETs. And they came about in 1963. And this is an important, you'll need to know this throughout the whole rest of this course, dealing with gates, sources, drains, and bodies. So if you remember from our transistor, we had this body, and then we had a gate, a drain, right? And then we had a thin layer between silicon. So this is your gate, your source, and your drain. Right? And so if these are positive, and this is positive, and this is negative, so what's going to happen here is you're going to have a zero put here, right? You put in a zero, the negatively charged ions 
and I go down and you've created a channel for positive to flow from source to drain. So what I've just drawn up here is a PMOS transistor. And so tying these definitions, the polysilicon layer is there. The source pin is here. The drain pin is here and the body pin, the silicon wafer itself, also called bulk, is there. So NMOS is a type of MOSFET. I expect you to, the TGO is going to have these definitions and the drawing, I believe. Yes, and the drawing. So let me put them all in one place so you can see them all. NMOS is a type of MOSFET where the channel exists between sources of drains when a high voltage is placed on the gate. And PMOS is a type of MOSFET where the channel exists between the source of the drain when the low voltage is put on the gate. So again, just like I've drawn out here, you have your, this is exactly, well, we drew this one here. Uh, P type, which is the N push down, P type, P type. They're going to be the opposite. And then you have your gate, your polysilicon, and you have your silicon dioxide film layer. And we're going to learn about why that's important, but we will have to do with things like electron punch through. There needs to be a, a potential here from this channel and the voltage. So All right, so let's continue. So CMOS is your complementary metal oxide semiconductor. So this, as I mentioned before, these are um, required for graduate students and for undergrads. They are extra credit. So FinFET, the promises and challenges. And you can look this up and do it. Uh, so you're basically reading through this and you're seeing the difference between a, tra the tr tr a tr the transistor we learned about and double gate fin fet primers and how do you actually make these work and how does having gates set up in different angles actually improve things. So TCAD is you, know, you have to worry about computer automation design tools, and for, particularly for transfer, transistors and fin fets. It's actually really neat stuff. So if you want to do some extra reading, there you go. For 1.10, NMOS passes a strong one on the gate, because if you think about it in the concept of the inverter, uh, you actually, it's a degraded or weak zero. If you put a zero on the gate, you're not going to get much of a signal. Uh, likewise, if you put a 1 on PMOS, it's going to be weak. And so when you're developing logic, this is actually going to become tremendously useful for you, this TGO. And so this topical guide objective has kind of reiterating what I was talking about n-type and p-type operations about how you got everything pushing down. P-types are being pushed down. You put a zero, the p-type bulk gets, I'm sorry, the p-type bulk gets pulled up and there is no channel and it's off. This is why it's known as a poor conductor of zeros. And it's ones, it pushes it down and you're able to create a channel. Now, here's the thing, if you have positive here and you got n type here well how do you keep these from just flowing up and that's where your si o2 comes into play likewise for p type zero pushes down one pulls up and then you can create the logic in that manner and so this is kind of just reiterating what I just said, pull up and pull down networks are how they are designed. So 1.12, we now have the basic description of how an inverter works. And we went over this in detail in lecture yesterday.
And then 1.13 uh, is the actual physical layout of the of the uh, inverter, where you have your silicon dioxide, right? SiO2 surrounding all of these to provide a little bit of a buffer. And then you have your VDD is here in this metal. And then you have a metal output. And then you have these polysilicon inputs. In this case, they're both A. And then you're trying to create channels. So here's the topical guide objective. And so here's what's happening. There's a zero. You're actually creating this channel. You're pushing this down. You're pulling the, P, uh, the holes up. And you're not able to create a channel here. So therefore, you're able to put a, a one on the output. And likewise, you're getting an inversion because you're actually pushing down the holes here. You're creating a channel for the n-type. And then p-type is going to be pulled up. I'm sorry, your electrons are going to be attracted to the ones. And as a result, your p-type is not going to have a channel. And so I wanted you to understand the Morgan's Law. That this will be very useful for you. So this is De Morgan's Law. Anyway, as we determined, you know, you're able to reduce the number of inverters from two to one just by using De Morgan's Law. And this is the one I actually changed during the lecture. So. It's easier to do it this way. They become forward in parallel and ended in series. And then, now what this last part means here, if there does not exist an instance where there's a combination where they created output. So if we're trying to create an AND gate, right? And AND gate is 0, 0, 0, and 1. You have 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. So we're trying to create some kind of network where there's a PMOS transistor and an NMOS transistor tied to ground. So if you have to have a 1, 1, right? So if you have 1, 1, and 1, you want it to flow from VDD to the output but only in an instance where you would have uh, two PMOS transistors in series. Right? So that's the only time we could actually have that. Well, as you recall from the previous topical guide objective, that the only way you can turn on PMOS transistors is when they are zeros on the gate. So we would have, this would be gate, source, terrain, source, terrain. When you have zeros, anytime you have a zero here, you want a zero on the output. So therefore, if there does exist an instance where there's not a combination that will create an output, invert the function and perform the uh, steps one and two again. Right? So then what you're going to do is you invert it. And then it's going to be 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0. <clears throat> and now, any time either of the inputs is a 0, we want to flow to the output. So now we have VDD, and you can have PMOS, PMOS to the output, right? So this is your output. So what that now means is anytime there's a zero, one of these two is going to be activated, and you're going to have a flow to your output. This is why we say that in the PMOS network, they're ANDed in parallel. If it's OR, then they are in series. Because the only time 
in this case we're inverting right and normally it's zero one 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 right then it becomes one zero 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 so it means the only time we went for an inversion that means we want to have the only instance where they have to go through both And basically what I just described here is you're going to want to draw the truth table and this upcoming circuit, which is basically what I just did, right? So we determined that So we determine that if you have 1, 1, 1, and 0, right? This means that you have to say, all right, you have NMOS, NMOS. So we'll say A, B, A, B. And then you have your output. So what we were actually doing here is we're anding in series when it's anded and parallel for PMOS. And the result is going to be when it's 1-1, one, one, right? It's 1-1, one, one, that means both of these NMOS transistors are activated, so we have a zero on the output. Otherwise, one of these two transistors is not going to be activated, and one of the PMOS transistors will be as a result we have a working NAND gate. So as a result, this is going to be our circuit. Likewise, with point two, we're trying to design an AND gate. And as I mentioned earlier, we have an instance here where we have a one on the output and we have all ones on inputs, which we have now proven is not possible. That means we have to invert it and then do the same thing. So we do NAND gate and then just add an inverter on the output. So this one's going to have six transistors. It's going to be the same solution from example one. And then we just add an inverter on the output. And this is an AND gate. NOR gate is the same thing. We put them in series here. And put these in parallel. So remember rule one for uh, they are ORed in parallel and ANDed in series. So NMOS. So that's part one. So you're going to have them. Um, right. And that's because we have a zero. So either one happens to have a uh, one on the input. It becomes activated. So that means you're going to get a zero on the output. Likewise with PMOS, they are ORed in series. And therefore, in order to get a 1 on the output of a NOR, they both have to be 0 in order to flow out and get a 1. OK, so hopefully this YouTube clip is still there. And this is where we're stopping. So this is where we're going to start next class. We're going to go over this whole fabrication of integrated circuits. All right, let's press pause. I'm going to upload it and.